Good morning, y'all. It is Sunday. I got a few things to, to go over. Had some comments from Alan. I appreciate your feedback. I'll try to go over anything that I can. Uh, Alan was talking about redfish signs and activity and how he's, uh, you know, still, still unsure. And like I had told him in the comment, uh, you know, sometimes I'm unsure until I'm 100% sure if that makes sense. It depends on the activity that they're that they're making some when a redfish makes a full-blown redfish activity I know for sure so like I told him uh, I don't have a drone uh, and I don't have the camera that I would like to have to be able to make my own footage uh, the drone footage I had the other day that was from my customer he brought his drone um, <clears throat> but my goal and my plans uh, are to get to get a good drone the one that i had was cheap and and crappy and i had to send it back so but i'm trying to save i'm trying to save my money right now for for a new truck because my truck my transmission is is not as good as it uh was and could be so uh, i'm trying to be careful you know so what i thought of i thought about it i said well how can i show y'all even more activity so i kind of borrowed some some footage from someone else's drone on youtube and i'm gonna you know walk y'all through the things that that I see and even though that it's you know that you're seeing the drone uh, from above you can still see these things from out of your kayak I, I can see them sitting down you can definitely see things better if you stand up uh, but if I'm in real shallow water I would uh, I would only stand up if like I'm drifting along you know because you can you know sneak up on them like that uh, I don't recommend standing up if you see a tail that's, you know, within casting range and you want to stand up all of a sudden. That all of a sudden movement for me has failed many times. That redfish, he's, he's gone as soon as I stand up. So uh, I do stand up and fish. And like I said, it's usually because I'm drifting and, and I can quietly and easily and me not, you know, moving up and down they can see things like that and not all of them will spook from you but a good amount you know you you miss out on some opportunities if you make that sudden movement so so i have a couple of clips from this week uh we we had a de we had a decent week you know it was kind of, it was kind of slow i don't think i caught a limit but uh but we caught a few uh you know nice fish on average the the few days that i fished Yesterday, we, we only caught a whole bunch of little drum. We didn't catch any reds, but I found some redfish activity. And as Alan uh, left this comment, uh, right before I was going to delete that the video footage for that day, because we didn't really do that great, I, I remembered seeing a, a pretty cool redfish activity or a redfish sign. So, uh, so we got a couple of clips. So this redfish is going to be uh, right up in the grass, real shallow, I mean real shallow, and the important thing to pay attention to is the sound, the commotion, the big commotion that he's going to put out. Did y'all see how big that water moved? I mean, it was huge. You know, that was like a low end slot red. Uh, I did cast to him a couple of times, but something that redfish often do is they make a bust real close to that shoreline grass and then they take off 20 or 30 feet. So you have to try to look at their wake, that V that they're pushing, where they're pushing water. This next clip is going to be a good wake for you to, to put in your, your mind. I spooked this fish. It was probably upper, uh, at least mid, mid slot. But the sound, I want you to pay attention to the sound he makes when he takes off. They do this when they're chasing bait. And they do this when you're not spooking them. But I have to go to that other lake. Oh, boy. So I follow their wakes, whether they're spooked or it's just a natural wake uh, when they're not spooked. And I cast past that wake. I try to judge where he's going and I try to cast past where he's going 
so I can bring that lure into him. That fish, you stop seeing the wake after, you know, a few seconds. It's because he sat down. He, he went a little ways, not very far, and then he stopped. Um, didn't hook up on him either. So, you know, spooked redfish just like that will definitely sometimes hit. I, I cast him anyways, no matter what. This next one is going to be just a redfish blow up on my topwater lure. The blow ups that they make naturally redfish and speckled trout but if you're fishing uh back lakes i'm i mostly catch redfish in back lakes ex except lighthouse there's some good trout in there but in the marsh close to the rivers and stuff uh i don't really catch that many trout in the lakes but the sound of a redfish blow up before you hear the big splash you're going to hear a suction noise like a popping sound and that is that is a game fish eating whenever he sucks in that bait There you go. Did y'all hear the suction noise first, followed by the explosion? So that's the difference between a big mullet jumping and splashing and just making a splash uh, versus ha hearing that that suction. It just makes a suction noise. So, so watch this footage real quick. And the things I want you to look for is when you can see the redfish, their back comes out of the water because they're so shallow. I find them like that. Uh, you don't see their, you don't always see their back for, you know, a long time. Sometimes they're cruising through like these fish, but you can notice if you look closely that their back is out of the water. So I look for that. I'm looking for tails, which this, this footage doesn't have any tails come up really. <clears throat> And then mud stirs. And I'm not talking about little, you know, mud stirs like this. I'm talking about, I mean, stirring up some mud. And that's redfish versus a mullet. And I want you to watch how this bait fish scatters. These, these are real small bait, little bitty bait, but you can see them flicker all over the surface. <clears throat> Usually bait doesn't do that unless something's chasing them. And look at all that mud that he put out. That's a redfish mudster. You can see those mudsters out of your kayak sitting down. You just have to really focus and, and be, uh, <laughs> be uh, a hunter and, and just look and pay attention. Don't, don't be getting on your phone and going on Facebook and stuff like that. You're not going to catch no fish like that. Uh, not if you're trying to sight fish. So, uh, yeah, there's some anchor spots that you can, you can do that, you know. But uh, the way that I fish, that phone rings and I, I don't even look at it. So I call them back when I get in. You see all the mud they left right behind them? That's just from their tail. When they're hunting, they put out mud stirs, even if they didn't bust any bait yet. 
and you can catch them like that. So mud stirs, I just cast somewhere around it. I don't cast right in the mud stir because I know that's where he was and I know he's going somewhere. I'm hoping that I could see his tail for just a second or his back for just a second uh, on one side of that mud stir or the other and that gives me an idea of where to cast to. You see his back completely out of the water. You can see the, the water starts right before, like right at the, the back of his head and you can see his back all the way to his tail. So those are things that I can see. I can just see a little piece. It almost looks like a stick or something. A lot of times they are just sitting still and I can just see their back, that, that little hump, and, uh, and I'll look and look and sometimes it doesn't even move for what feels like forever. And I sometimes think it's a stick and I'll cast at it anyways and uh, you know, just focus on, on that stick and see at some point his tail is going to slowly move when they're just sitting down and if i just see something barely move then i know that it's a redfish could it could be a drum too drum do that also you can go on youtube and search uh the way i found this it was feeding redfish drone footage and you can learn a lot from watching those videos you see all the muddy left and look at all the scattering bait all these shiny sparkly spots is where that bait hit the water when it after it jumped and, and that right there is a sign of feeding fish you got one two three four five you got six of them all together uh and they're cruising around they are hunting these are the best times to catch them the easiest way to catch them because for one they're making just all kinds of commotion and I know you have bait fish that's doing all kinds of stuff all over the place and I know you got big mullet that's jumping, landing, making, you know, big sounds, but it's not it's not the same sound. Unfortunately, <clears throat> this video doesn't have any uh real life sound, so you'll just have to go back to that blow up on my topwater lure and and listen to that. Watch this video if if you're still unsure, watch it a few times, you know. Uh, this is some of the ways I learned what you know what what I know now uh, and then the rest came from being on the water so if you're fully committed to to really wanting to, to be a good fisherman especially uh, redfish uh, you know you'll get the hang of it you'll be out there and you'll be zoned, zoned in and and focused and you know I didn't put all this stuff together in a couple of weekends you know for me it it took you know I'm probably a slow learner uh it it took me uh at least a year of fishing three days a week in salt water when I was you know pretty brand new to salt water so but if you're studying things like this and <clears throat> in the videos that I make and studying those um I think it should help you you know a lot faster but just keep in mind nothing is better you can't learn everything from a video uh but you can get pretty uh pretty dang close you know so this guy's channel name is 386 fl productions and that's called redfish on the hunt here's some more clips some of them are the same but some of them are, are extra so hopefully uh you know this second one will work uh, will help you out as well
also, you see that big bird? I don't know the name of them. I'm not a bird watcher. Well, I am, <laughs> but I don't, uh, I don't pay attention to their names. Those big crane looking birds. I'm sure one of y'all can tell me what it's called. I won't remember though, because I'm not, I'm just not interested in some of the particulars I'm interested in, in why is that bird right there? You know, what is he doing? And you can look at those birds and you can see them kind of hunched down. They're hunting a lot of times, a lot of times. I have casted somewhere close to that bird that I seen and they're usually right up on the shoreline and I've hooked up not even knowing, you know, not even seeing a fish. Pay attention to the big birds. Uh, they, they, they are usually hunting close to redfish hunting. Those reds are pushing bait one way and they're waiting for that bait to come right, right in the bird's mouth. So that, that's it. That is redfish activity in full force. They are feeding. They're on the move. Those are the great days. We, you know, and I don't see amazing activity every single day on the water. I sometimes just see one or two good things. That's a really tough day, a low activity day. And some days they're blowing up everywhere. It's like, you know, which way do I go? Which fish, which uh, section of fit or, uh, certain fish do i want to target it's you know you just have to you just have to pick one <laughs> if i can tell that one of them was bigger I, that's the one i'm gonna pick so uh so yeah the activity it just depends on the day um i you know i still study you know uh theories fishing theories i know all the theories you got the moon phase the major and minor feeding periods you got the barometric pressure and you got the tides and the tidal movement for me uh tides like i mentioned before i fish I fish based on tide level and where can I get in, how shallow can I get, and uh, in which lakes can I fish. If I can get my kayak in there uh, and I'm almost dragging, you know, so my kayak's just barely floating and I might have to kind of give a little push every once in a while, those are the perfect uh, conditions for me to fish because the fish will be in there. They, they, the reds don't need as much water as we need in our kayaks to go in there they can get shallower than us and so they'll be in there and <clears throat> and you want to you'll you'll be able to see them better their back sticking out of the water you know their tails coming up and stuff like that so um so yeah it just depends man and uh <clears throat> as far as the all the theories and all that um you know i've had tons of amazing days when the moon phase theory said it was a poor day of fishing and I've had tons of amazing days when, when I was completely outside of those major or minor feeding periods. So uh, if they work for you, it's something you can look at and, <clears throat> and try for yourself. A lot of people really believe in them. I don't because I, I feel like it's kind of all over the place. You know, every once in a while, like, I do real good in a major, you know. Uh, but, I mean, I can remember all of my double and triple redfish limit days and days where i was just like oh man what the heck you know what happened today and i went back and i and i looked at what time of the day it was i looked at the major and minors and i looked at the uh the moon phases i looked at the pressure and uh you know sometimes it's it's a rant it was a random thing you know it wasn't it was a poor day of fishing uh maybe the pressure was a little higher than i would have uh, thought was going to be, uh, you know, maybe I thought it was going to be tough and it ended up being good. So even though I study these things every single day, uh, I haven't put together a solid, uh, you know, pattern on stuff like that. <clears throat> so that's why I always say, just go out there and fish, man. Uh, you know, th there's no telling what might happen, but I like to sight fish and I like to fish based on, uh, the things I see, like what I just showed you in the drone footage. So I'm looking forward to getting a better drone. It's gonna, like I said, it's probably gonna be a while, but I would love to have my own footage of stuff like that, uh, to, to give y'all a better idea of what to look for. I hope the tips were helpful. I appreciate all of y'all. Thanks for watching and tight lines.